This video, I'm going to show you how beliefs do not create reality. I'm going to show you the truth that I realized and how this will change your life. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you how beliefs do not create reality, showing you a totally new perspective that puts in alignment the way reality really works, which makes the process so much easier. Now, let's look at how we perceive reality. Now, the reason we're going to do this is we're going to see that we don't actually create our own reality. Let me show you how it actually works. So my favorite stick figure, here we go, long torso, little legs. Is it a belief? I don't know. Okay. He just has, he just has a long torso. We can't be can't be judgmental against him, okay? Um, so here we go. So this, let's say this is a mirror. And then he sees his little, his little polka dotted body with his real long torso, his little tiny legs. And he's looking at himself in the mirror, okay? Now, the way reality works is when we perceive in reality, we pick up on about 2 million bits of information out of billions of bits of information. Our brain, our brain can only pick up, he's got a lot of space on this side, he better not hit his head there. He's got only that of the capability of picking up on 2 million bits of information when in actuality there are billions of bits of information all around us. Now, the way that it really works is which billion, which millions of bits of information we pick up on will depend upon our expectations, will depend upon the momentum of energy we have going, it'll depend upon that and that is what we will perceive of. Now, what we experience in reality is a reflection of what we believe to be true, but we do not actually create reality. This is what makes the biggest change because when we see that we don't actually create reality, it allows us to surrender to a more divine plan. You see, we are divine spiritual beings dreaming we are humans in these little avatar bodies. And as we go through life, we wake up to more and more of who we are. Now, when we say that we create reality. Our beliefs create reality. We emphasize this 3D avatar. You could say 3 to 4D avatar. And what we many times do is we put all the weight on our little avatar body. We perceive reality through the five senses. We can taste, touch, smell, hear, see, but at a greater level, we're much more than our body. And as we wake up to that, we call that spiritual awakening. And then what we do is we go out into the world and many times we think that we have to create or attract something that's over there to into here. And it implies that what's over there isn't already here already. And you may say, well, it is, it's over there. It's not over here. But you see, everything in our reality is based on frequency. So if we match the frequency to what we want to experience, we then experience it in our life. But everything exists here and now. It's just that when it comes to frequency, we may perceiving of the reality, the 2 million bits of information, maybe perceiving of the frequency of it being all the way over there. And then what we do is we begin to bring our frequency to more of an alignment so that it's in our life. Then we perceive it coming closer through our time space reality, the way that we perceive reality. But understand all the different realities already exist of it being over there, of it being closer, of it being over here and us having it. But many people go at it from the point of trying to get that from over there to over here, which emphasizes lack. It makes the process so much harder. And then it puts all this burden on the ego. You have to create reality. The little ego has to create reality. Not knowing that the reality already exists. And it can be so much easier with this perspective because you then realize you do not create reality, you perceive reality. 
because the two million bits of information that your brain can pick up on, it's gonna selectively look for and have what are called self-fulfilling prophecies because of what the brain is tuned to, because of the, what it perceives. But the difference is then when we realize that we change our brain, we change how we exist in the world, how we relate to the world, we then change this reflection. But most people, 99% of people, will go about their lives trying to actually change the reflection. I felt bad, so I had to add a little couple more polka dots. Dotted line, whatever you call it. Most people will go and try to change the mirror itself. And they will, they will beat themselves up and say, well, this mirror doesn't have the money that I want. This, it doesn't have it. So I'm going to go out here and try to create it. Instead of understanding everything is about perception, everything exists within. And if you change yourself, if you change your subconscious mind, you then change, not create you then change what you perceive of. The two million bits of information will then change. And two million bits of information, that is a very small percentage of actual reality of what is quote unquote out there. But we selectively focus on it depending on our beliefs. So our beliefs come from reference experiences in our past. Our beliefs come from agreements that we've made many times unconsciously. And I'd say one of the biggest beliefs that hold people back is people believing that they are just the 3D physical avatar body. Because when we believe that we are just the 3D physical avatar body, we feel separated from everyone else. And sometimes in that separation, we then develop this belief, this self-image that we are a victim. We are a victim of the things that happen in life. We are a victim of... of our past circumstances, and it keeps those things in our energy field, and then we go into the world and we keep perceiving more and more of these two million bits of information, of the four billion bits of information, we experience the two million that are equal to that victim mentality. So most of our life of actually creating what we want is realizing, first off, we don't do that. We don't do that. What we do instead is we perceive of the reality, which makes the process so much easier. We can let go, we can surrender. Imagine at the same time, there is some sort of divine intention of the universe. It sounds very mystical. I know, divine intention of the universe, but this allows our ego body to begin to let go a little bit more. There's a higher mission to the universe. This is why I believe one of the most powerful things you can do is learn how to put out and give value to other people. A lot of times your passion will be intertwined with that. When you are adding value to other people, what you're putting out then becomes what you get back. But what you put out is also what benefits the universe, what benefits the system itself that we live in. Because other people are actually other versions of you. Depends on how deep down this rabbit hole you wanna go. But what you put out is what you get back. The reason karma is something that exists is because other people are other versions of us. So what we do to someone else, we do to another aspect of us. So that comes back to us. What we put out is what we get back. Now, when it comes to understanding this process, the billions of bits of information, let me simplify this word, because belief is kind of like this. It's kind of like this word. It's like belief. What is a belief? Is it this thing? Well, that's no, not a thing. Is it a frequency? When did I pick up this belief? How do I let go of this belief? Our beliefs come from our stories, the stories we tell ourselves about the way reality works. You may tell yourself a story that says, anytime I'm in a relationship, someone takes advantage of me. I always give more than I get. And guess what? That story that you have that may be unconscious, you might not be aware of, that story then goes into which two million bits of information you're going to perceive of, not create, the bits of information you're going to perceive are going to be in alignment to that story. Our reality is equal to the stories we tell ourselves consistently. So if you want to change your life, if you want to change your beliefs and perceive of a new reality, change your stories. And one of the best ways to change your stories is to become aware of the stories you're telling yourself that you're not aware of. Something may have happened when you were young, when you were four or five years old. 
And that could have been you were at dinner table and someone told you to be quiet and that your opinion didn't matter. Be quiet. You're not meant to talk right now. This is a, this is a conversation for adults. Okay? So just sit there and be quiet. Eat your mashed potatoes. And then in that moment, someone may have given that the meaning that says people aren't interested in what I say. What I say doesn't matter. I am not worthy of my own opinion. And then we develop that story. That story has been on autopilot since five, six years old. And we continue to experience the two million bits of information that are equal to that belief that was set into place when you were that young. Here is the magic though to it. We are meaning generating machines. We are always generating some sort of meaning as to the things that happen and what things mean. We do most of that unconsciously. And that's why a lot of things are in autopilot that we don't prefer to experience. When we become aware of the meanings we made, that's when we change our life. The thing we have to understand is that we agreed to that meaning at a certain point. You could say, yeah, but a parent told you this, but we had to, at a, at a certain level, agree to it. Maybe unconsciously, maybe we said, oh, okay, that is the way reality works. People don't care about my opinion. We did agree to it. We cannot change that which we do not own. That's why we have to but be aware. Yes, I believe that I took on that belief. I did that. If you don't admit that you did it, then you can't actually change it because then we remain in that old victim mentality that we were talking about. So the truth about reality is what you perceive of in your reality depends upon the frequency you are putting out and depends upon the beliefs that you have, which are equal to the stories you have, but you're not creating it. You're just perceiving of it. You're just perceiving of the mirror. You're just perceiving of it. Just like you didn't create the mirror that you look into, but you know that it is a reflection. The real reality itself is just a reflection. And in a way, you know, in the hermetic principles, it says that the law of mentalism, everything is mental. Most things in our life are ideas. We go out into the world and these ideas, we think a certain way about them. You may feel a certain way about someone in your life. And then what happens is experiences manifest themselves that reflect that perspective you have about them. Somebody drains your energy. Guess what? You think about them. You say to yourself, they drain my energy. And then when you go out into the world, you find this person and guess what they do? They drain your energy. That's a self-fulfilling prophecy until you realize that you drain your own energy because of the perception, the labels you put on the situation. You can't change that. Because the power is still with someone else. We're giving away our power saying, you dictate my energy. Yes, you can be aware of when you're around certain people, it does drain your energy. You can be aware of that, but you still admit that you create it and then you choose something new. If you keep going to it, if you keep going into with that person, they keep draining your energy, then you're, you keep choosing the old reality over and over again, but you are choosing it until you become aware that you choose it. You can't change it. You may have a certain situation that you don't like that happens at work and you think about that and then guess what? You go into work and it happens more often because it's mental. You're thinking about it. You're feeling it. You go out into the world and that's the 2 million bits of information you perceive of in alignment to that story. You tell yourself about how you don't like that thing that happens at work. You see what you put out is what you get back. What you think about other people goes out into the world and they then pick up on it. So why gossip is like one of the worst things. Don't talk bad about other people because when you do, you can best believe that they're going to feel that from you. They're going to have an inclination to talk bad about you because we're all connected. So what you put out is what you get back. Everything is mental in the sense that your inner dialogue creates your outer reality. You change your inner dialogue by observing your thoughts, becoming aware of it. You then change what parts of reality you didn't experience. But remember, it's all bits of information. Reality is information, but which information you perceive of will depend upon you. It'll depend upon you and your stories that you tell yourself about who you are. And what I'm encouraging you to do is to let go of those stories, not to develop and you can develop a new one if you want, but be aware of the stories you have going and simply let them go. They don't serve you anymore. They were meaning generating experiences where you generated meaning without even knowing it, but you can let go of that meaning and understand you are creating that meaning. You either agree to something. If somebody tells you something, if you go to someone, they say, um, they say, you're a awkward person. 
you can choose to agree with that or you can choose to not agree with that. You can choose to say, you know what, you're pretty freaking awkward. Maybe it's you and you just don't know how to perceive of somebody that's pretty cool. You see? It's how you interpret what is, what's happening. There's always what happens and the story we tell ourselves about what happened. And what happened is someone says something to you. But what the story we tell us, I was so okay, to be said I was awkward. Am I awkward? I noticed that too on my YouTube channel as well. When it comes to comments, most of the comments are, are amazing, really nice comments, which I'm very grateful for. But every now and then you get like a, you know, one of those people that just likes to comment something negative. When I read those comments, they don't really get to me at all. But the only ones that normally do are ones that I might be a little bit insecure about. Because the ones you're a little bit insecure about, you're more agreeable to them because you have an insecurity about it, you see? But most of them are just completely, most people that do write negative comments aren't happy themselves and they're projecting that to other people. So it's not really anything personal at all, you see? But if it's something that someone's insecure about, it brings through that. So with reality in general, understand you do not create reality, you perceive of reality because every parallel reality you can imagine already exists. As you change the story you tell yourself about who you are, you then change which two million bits of information you perceive of. So change your story, become aware of the stories you're telling yourself. And as you let go of that story, you will then begin to change the out of reflection, which remember is just a reflection. It's a neutral reflection. And you know that if you want to change this, all you gotta do is smile here. And then guess what? Boom, this one smiles too. You feel abundant here, you'll attract more of the abundance there. The key is knowing that as you shift within, it then shifts your life. So something I have that is coming very soon is the shift experience. It's almost completely done. It's going to be launching second week of July, I believe. So if you want to be the first to know about it and to get all the bonuses that are going to come with it, you'll see a link in the top of the description box below. Go ahead and sign up and I will send you updates as to when that becomes available. The shift experience is going to be something that helps people shift to the reality they want using frequency, but also shift their level of consciousness as well. It's going to be the most powerful thing that I've ever created. It's going to be my main thing for the next five years that I go around traveling, teaching people is the shift experience. So if you want to know more, you can click on the link in the top of the description box below. Also, I'll be doing more live communities on Instagram. If you haven't followed me on Instagram yet, you can follow me here. I post twice a day there. Plus I do uh, live so you can ask me questions as well. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little notification here so you can see the daily visit I do. And that, as always, peace, much love, and namaste.